Hello and welcome to the show. I'm Kamal Sadu. Manatees must be one of the most amiable of sea creatures, but sadly these massive underwater mammals are in strife. Pleasure craft are killing and injuring far too many of these gentle giants, and their numbers are falling. Fortunately, two very special characters are about to show us how injured manatees can get back their sea legs. Steve Backshaw reports from Puerto Rico. This is Raphael. Two years ago, he was found dehydrated and dangerously underweight. A group of marine biologists in Puerto Rico worked around the clock to bring him back to health. The director of the Caribbean Marine Mammal Laboratory, Dr. Antonio Mignucci, is introducing me to the joys of manatee rehabilitation. In a few months, he hopes to return Rafael to the sea where he was found. The team are heading out to collect seagrass for Rafael. Whenever they collect food for Rafael, they check up on a former manatee patient, Moses. When Moses was two weeks old, his mother was butchered for her meat and he was orphaned. Luckily, Moses was saved and taken care of. And seven years ago, he was released into the wild. Now, all we have to do is find him. For the last four years, Moses has stayed in the waters around this fishing village. And it seems he's found us, rather than the other way around. It's the first time I've ever been up close to a manatee. I have to say, he's one of the most extraordinary looking creatures I've ever seen. He actually has a lot of similarities to elephants. It's not surprising, because he is actually quite closely related. The skin's very similar, and it's a lot softer, because he's covered in algae. But he has these bristles around his nose and his tail, which are very like an elephant. And he has quite the most appalling breath I think I've ever smelled. <laughs> Over the years, vet Luis Figueroa has become quite attached to Moses and is keen to see how he's getting on. Grab his flipper, and you can hold him there. Okay, good. So how is his heart rate? Oh, he's normal. Uh, it's around 25, which is normal for an uh, adult manatee. Uh -huh. how, how old is he now? How old is he? He's, he's like uh, 10 years, close to 10 around years. 10 years. Yeah. yeah. When he got here, when we rescued him, he was two weeks around old. Two weeks old. Well, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Okay, now Luis okay. uses hand signals to try and get this gentle giant to turn over. Seems he may have forgotten this trick that he learned long ago at the marine lab. Antonio. Moses seems to be doing fine, but the future of this endangered population depends on males and females being able to find each other. And according to biologist Jose Alessia, or Tony as he's known, human activity can make that very difficult. Tony, what is all this fancy-looking kit you've got here? Uh, well, this is our um, manatee audio recording equipment. And what kind of things are you hearing? Um, well, let's place the hydrophone and see what we got. Initially, you will hear a lot of background noise from the environment. <laughs> Sounds like, like something is frying. Um, but if you're really careful and if there's any manatees in the area, then you will hear them squeaking. It's like a high-pitched squeak um, and squeals like... <laughs> <laughs> Could you do that for me one more time? There you go. Perfect. Could have mistaken you for a manatee. With boats producing so much background noise, hearing manatees is very difficult. Noisy motors don't just make life hard for Tony, but for manatees as well. They rely on sound to find each other. Boats and jet skis cause more than just communication problems for these gentle creatures. They often kill them. Later in the show, Dr. Mignucci reveals a potential solution to the conflict between boats and manatees. And Raphael learns some neat tricks for survival in the wild. Little wonder that Puerto Rico's manatee population has plummeted. The massive so-called sea cows are so slow they're sitting ducks for passing boats. 
So many are killed, it's estimated just 150 manatees remain in the waters off Puerto Rico. And every animal recovered helps rebuild the population. Earlier in the program, we met Rafael, a manatee poised for a new life in the wild. But as Steve Backshaw reports, Rafael has a few lessons to learn before he's finally released. In Puerto Rico, manatees are fighting for survival. Dr. Antonio Mignucci has been conducting aerial surveys as part of his long-term plan to protect these precious creatures. What you see down below are endangered West Indian manatees. Today, we counted 29 manatees, and most of them were mother and calf pairs, which is very positive for them. With only about 150 manatees left in the waters off Puerto Rico, you can see why Antonio works so hard to save every single one. Antonio's surveys let the government know which areas it would be best to keep as marine reserves, free from boats. This will give all of Puerto Rico's manatees, including Rafael, a better chance of survival. In just six months' time, the team from the Caribbean Marine Mammal Laboratory hope to return Rafael to the wild. They're using lessons learnt from Moses, a wild manatee, to prepare Rafael for his release. Curator Marta Rodriguez is about to present Rafael with an important challenge. Marta, what is this rather healthy looking green stuff we're putting in here? This is uh, one, one of the three types of seagrasses that we have here in Puerto Rico. Manatees, or sea cows as they're sometimes called, can eat up to 200 pounds or 91 kilos of seagrass a day. Can we get some of this stuff in then, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> one lesson learned from Moses is that the sooner Raphael learns to forage for grass at the bottom of the pool, the better. In the wild, seagrass will be Raphael's main source of food. He cannot be released until the team is sure he will find and eat the seagrass. This is one of many lessons for Raphael. He's also being taught signals and tricks, which will help later with his medical checks in the wild. Chiari uses a dog clicker to call him over. With a head show, they can check his mouth, eyes and nostrils. And with this trick, which caused Moses some trouble, he rolls over so they can check his belly. With breath on command, he can be checked for infections, far easier than taking nasal swabs. They can even signal him to move to another person. Slow, I told you. Ah, uh, he's definitely got it this time. But they, they don't do that bad. They're just slower. Everything is slow. I mean, they have two speeds, slow and slower. Yeah, I can see that. What kind of things do you need to do with him? Every month, the pool is drained, and Dr. Luis Figueroa gives Rafael a full vet check. Surprisingly, male manatees are quite comfortable lying on their backs. On such an enormous body, finding minute ears is not so easy. Oh, here. Here. Okay. Absolutely tiny, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yes. This gentle and intelligent creature is incredibly precious. The vet check is very thorough. Swelling in the slippers. The workload here can be extremely heavy. At 360 pounds, or 163 kilograms, Raphael seems to be doing really well. Thanks to the dedication of Antonio and his team, and the lessons learnt from Moses the wild manatee, there's a good chance Raphael will live out his full 60-year lifespan in the wild. <laughs>